This might be like really psychotic to say, but I feel like I would do a lot of things to get hired as a science advisor for a Chris Nolan film. Like that is my favorite director. I think I would give up my legs, my legs. I would need my hands to like be a scientist though. So like maybe my legs. Why am I thinking about this? Hold on. <laughs> Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited to be here today because this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while now. For those of you who don't know, I am an astrophysicist. As an astrophysicist, I get posed with a lot of questions from random people all of the time. But in this video, I wanted to talk about the most common questions that I get as an astrophysicist. Some of them are related directly to astronomy. Some of them aren't related directly towards astronomy. I th some of them are just really fun in general. So I think I will go in the order of what people ask me the most versus like the least. But I think this is a pretty good like robust list of the most asked questions that I get. So to start, the number one question that I always get from people is, have you seen Interstellar? The answer is yes, I have seen Interstellar. I freaking love Interstellar. I am a huge Chris Nolan fan, although Interstellar isn't my favorite Chris Nolan film. If you know the answer as to what my favorite Chris Nolan film is, comment it below. I wanna see that you can also just guess. Why people always ask, have you seen Interstellar? I, I don't know. Do they just wanna know yes or no? Maybe people wanna know what I think of it, but personally, I think that Interstellar is the most scientifically accurate sci-fi film that was ever created. And I think that's why it did so well amongst a wide audience. Whether you are a scientist or not, there are many ways that people connect with it, even if it's from a very personal standpoint about loved ones, or whether it be that you are super into astronomy and astrophysics, and you just naturally gravitate towards all of the terminology and super hard science concepts which are presented in the film. The prominent figure who made this film critically acclaimed amongst the science community is world-renowned astrophysicist Kip Thorne. He was an executive producer for the film and also the chief like scientific advisor, I think is the official name for it. He made sure that everything was scientifically accurate down to the T. He helped write the script he also helped create simulations to model exactly what the dynamics of a black hole look like. So the really cool image of the black hole gargantuum that you see in the film was created by simulations and theoretical models that Kip Thorne made. And because of these efforts, he was able to use this to produce actual science and in turn he ended up winning a Nobel Prize for it which is so freaking cool. I think this also highlights how important science communication is. It can be very useful in more ways than one. Science communication efforts can win you Nobel Prizes and can also get you invited to Christopher Nolan movie premieres. So Chris Nolan in like five six years or so if you're looking for a scientific advisor specializing in astrophysicist who is a huge fan of yours, hit me up. The second most frequently asked question that I get is, do you know my star sign? The answer is no. I probably don't know your star sign, but I can take a good guess. A common misconception is that a lot of people confuse astronomy with astrology. Astronomy is actually studying stars, galaxies, black holes, planets. We study the physics of how planets move, how galaxies evolve, how they interact, how the universe was created. It's actual like real quantifiable science, whereas astrology is taking patterns in the sky, recognizing these as constellations, which are attributed to different stories and folklore from many different civilizations throughout human history. These constellations are assigned to different months in the year. And depending on what month you were born, people say that you have similar personality traits or characteristics, likes, dislikes. So it has nothing to do with astronomy at all. Astrology is a really fun talking point between people. I personally am not too big into astrology. Like I'm a cancer. I don't think that I fully embody everything that cancers represent, but that's because I'm, not everybody is the same. I think when you're looking through some of those astrology charts and characteristics, you will find something from every single sign that relates to you. So to me, I think astrology is kind of 
BS. I'm sorry to all of the astrology enthusiasts, but I do think that they're fun talking points. The people who use astrology to decide who they should disengage with are kind of red flags to me because astrology doesn't mean anything in the end. The next frequently asked question that I get is, is their life out there in the universe, specifically intelligent life. My answer to this is I am not 100% certain. However, one thing that I do know in particular is we live in the beautiful Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way is home to about 100 to 400 billion other stars. And even outside of that scope, we know that there are billions, maybe even trillions of other galaxies that make up our entire universe. So to think that humans are the only intelligent beings out there, I feel like is a little egocentric. Like if the p condition are so perfect for us to exist here in our little solar system neighborhood. Who's to say that can exist in the other quadrillion other systems that are probably out there in existence, right? Have we discovered intelligent life? No. Have we seen any other signs of intelligent life in other exoplanets? No, not yet. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist specifically when we can't observe them. Technology is limited. We can only observe other planets in our own Milky Way galaxy. We can't observe anything in other galaxies. But who's to say that is not going to change in the near future? Also, given the fact that, right, you know, Earth is like 4 billion years old, who is not to say that intelligent life from somewhere far out in the distant universe didn't make contact with Earth when like the dinosaurs were roaming? If you were to organize the time of Earth's existence onto a 60 second clock, for example, human existence would only account for like the last half a second <laughs> out of the 60 seconds, right? So there is such, there's been such a long period of time even before humans existed. So it's possible that, I don't know, intelligent life came here said there's nothing here and then did. Does that intelligent life look like you and I, like humans? Probably not because they live on a planet where their atmosphere is probably not composed of nitrogen and oxygen. Maybe their sun does not produce the same amount of radiation that ours produces, so their skin is a bit different, right? So essentially, that's a really, really long answer of me saying, I don't know and no one knows, but we'll just have to stick around long enough to see. The last question is a good segue into the next and that is, can humans survive on Mars? This is another one where I'm like, I don't actually know. Also, disclaimer, I am not a planetary science girl. If you've watched my other videos, you should know that I am a galaxy theorist. So I don't really know a lot about the planets. I don't know a lot about the solar system. Contrary to popular belief, astronomers don't know everything about everything in astronomy. You usually just kind of like pick a subfield and you're an expert in that. But can humans survive on Mars? If you were to go to Mars right now, you would not be able to breathe at all. The atmosphere on Mars is very thin compared to that of Earth's. It's not very dense either. And the atmosphere is made up of carbon monoxide and I think a little bit of nitrogen. So it's not breathable, um, but Mars is a terrestrial planet. So if you were to go there, you could be able to stand onto the surface. It's geologically active and all just like Earth. So I guess in retrospect, no, <laughs> we couldn't be able to survive on Mars, but could you colonize the planet if you brought lots of supplies and resources with you? Maybe, I don't know. I think the goal is for NASA. Well, <laughs> given the imminent budget cuts coming to NASA, maybe this won't happen anymore. I think the plan was to send humans to Mars um, to see if they could set up camp there for however long. I have no idea. I guess the answer is a little bit of yes and no, depending on which way you look at it. My next question that I get asked is, do you have a collection of telescopes? The answer is no, I don't have any telescopes at all, actually. The first time that I looked into just like a simple telescope, I think was maybe two years ago. I think someone was just randomly standing outside and was like, look, there's Saturn. Do you wanna see it through a telescope? And I was like, wait a minute, I would love to. Like, I, I don't think that I've ever seen any of the planets through a telescope at all. And yeah, I, Saturn looked beautiful. He was there in all his glory, all the rings were there and everything. And it was so freaking cool. I know there are some astronomers that do, but I wouldn't say it's common for 
astronomers to own telescopes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Do y'all have telescopes? I, I don't, maybe I'm weird. I think it really just depends on, on who you ask. The next question is, are you religious or do you believe in God? The answer is yes, um, I am religious. I do believe in God. I was raised Episcopalian, so it's like derived from Catholicism, but not as conservative as the Catholic Church. I don't find that it interferes with my work at all. I think you can be an astronomer or an astrophysicist and your beliefs will not interfere with any of your work. I'm very proud of my, my religious beliefs and my identity. I never shy away from it at all. No one has ever seen it as a bad thing in, in my work. I'm not sure that I've ever talked about it at all. Some people like to ask, well, as scientists, you believe in science. You don't believe you don't believe in religion, you believe in the Big Bang. But the way that I look at it, I'm like, well, how could you not believe in both? Something has to come from something, right? You know, what makes everything go bang? In the Bible, it's stated God created the heavens and the earth. It doesn't say how he created it. It just says one day the heavens and the earth were there. Thus the Big Bang. Like for me, it's, I don't think about it too much. It's it's not that deep. My work and my religious beliefs, they, they don't collide at all. I know plenty of astronomers as well who are religious and it doesn't pose any kind of an issue in, in the workplace. Next question is gonna be a combination of two questions. So the first half of the question is, are we headed towards a black hole? And if we are, what is inside a black hole? Disclaimer, we are not, as in Earth, is not headed for a black hole. When I give planetarium shows and I tell people at the center of our galaxy is a supermassive black hole, people start panicking like are we headed there no we orbit around the supermassive black hole at the center earth is fine we live on like one of the most outermost parts of the galaxy we have a safe distance away from the center so we live in like the galactic suburbs so we are totally fine we are not headed towards a black hole for those who are probably thinking closer distances is the sun going to be a black hole that we are headed towards no the sun is not going to become a black hole at the end of its evolutionary lifetime it will not be a black hole because the sun simply isn't big enough so so please do not fear. Also, the sun is set to die out in the next 5 billion years. So we've got plenty of time to enjoy it. So the next half of the question is what is inside a black hole? The answer is that no one really knows. I certainly don't know because I'm not a black hole theorist. I read a book a while ago by Stephen Hawking and it's called like Brief Answers to the Big Questions. So he answers a bunch of questions that he always gets, similar to like what I'm doing right now. But these are more sophisticated questions, not about astrology and interstellar. And one of the questions was, what is inside a black hole? He goes into a deep dive about the structure of a black hole, what happens as you near a black hole, what happens to space time because of a black hole. And long story short, he gives a very elegant, way of saying he doesn't know, but it's theorized that inside a black hole is a point of singularity. So a singularity is when all of your matter and material falling into a black hole is crushed and condensed into infinite density. And this singularity of infinite density is also infinitely small. A singularity in general relativity is a point in which the model completely fails. I'm not sure if quantum mechanics makes up for this or can explain any of this, but long story short, nobody exactly knows what is inside a black hole. Once you're past the event horizon, which is kind of like this outside ring or boundary point, there is a point of no return and you are forever falling into this black hole and into the singularity. I think there's also a point at which space time is reversed so you're no longer in space time but in like time space i remember learning that in undergrad all i know is that it stuck out to me and i was like man i don't even want to know what kind of dimension time space is this is probably all theoretical there's no mathematical models or any physical models that confirm any of this um you're just into the rabbit hole of theory <laughs> the next question that i always get asked is what is the difference between astronomy and astrophysics and is it okay to use the two interchangeably the answer answer is yes, you can use the two interchangeably. I think most people in the profession do. I typically use the term astro as a blanket, right? It covers both astronomy and astrophysics, but really what is the difference between the two? There's not too much of a difference. I think the easiest way to differentiate between the two is whether you are a theorist or whether you're an observer. So if you're an, mainly an observer, meaning all of the work that you do comes from data that you receive from telescopes, whereas astrophysics is more theoretical. So are you doing more pencil paper type of research? 
Are you using simulations to create mock observations? Then yes, you are an astrophysicist. I guess it's that you care more about the physics of your research. I would consider myself to be an astrophysicist because I'm a theorist, but I know some observers that also say that they are astrophysicists. But really, you can just use both. I, I don't think anybody will fault you saying either. Sometimes I say I'm an astronomer. Sometimes I say I'm an astrophysicist. Sometimes I say I'm a physicist, or sometimes I just say I'm a research scientist. It depends on your flavor. If I really want to impress people, I'm an astrophysicist. If I don't want people to ask me anything about what I do, I am a physicist or I am a research scientist. But it's something about astrophysicist or astronomer that like a flip in people's brains switches and suddenly they're like, I wanna to talk to you about everything. Whereas when you tell people that you're a physicist, they're like, you're probably really smart, but I don't know anything about physics or physics was hard for me in high school, right? So they don't even bother. But astronomy, astrophysics, they're like, oh, I wanna to talk to you about black holes, dark matter, the universe, cosmology. People get really excited. <laughs> now the last of the frequently asked questions is, does astronomy take over your entire life and does it make you a mad scientist? Um, the answer is no, it does not take over my whole life because I don't let it take over my whole life. I would like to think that I have a life and a personality outside of what I do. I love what I do, but I don't want it to take over my whole life. I have other things that I enjoy doing. I freaking love to travel. Any chance that I get, I will, I will travel to a really fun destination. I love to go dancing as well. So I will go out to a club and dance on a table and have a really good time. I also love sports. I'm a huge football or like European football fan. So what I spend most of my time doing as well outside of astronomy is going to different football games and events when I can. I'm also a huge like adrenaline junkie. I love roller coasters. I love heights. So like anything that's skydiving, paragliding, bungee jumping, things like that. I love putting myself in those extreme situations, all gas, no brakes type of person. So no, it doesn't make me a mad scientist. I, I don't think. Am I just like, mad in the sense that that is kind of my default personality yes it doesn't come from my science like i think i'm just kind of a bit of a crazy person and if you are thinking of pursuing astronomy or astrophysics i don't think that you should let it take over your whole life too because when you let it consume your whole life i think that's when you can become a mad scientist you should give yourself a break to be your own person and to still have your own hobbies and identities out, outside of work. That is the end of the list and that is all the questions that I have. If there are questions that you get frequently asked as an astronomer and astrophysicist, feel free to leave them down below. I think these are so fun to go through whether they're scientific or, or not. If you have any questions for me that are a little unconventional, please feel free to leave them down below. I would also be happy to answer them as well. I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.